it's like a uh, uh what, you what are you? No, she said, "What are you about?" And I was like, "What do you mean, what I'm about?" And she's like, "She fucking asked that." And she said, "Oh she, no, she asked me." It's a little blonde girl, and she said, "Do you play sports?" And I was like, "Why do you ask?" And she's like, "Because you're black." And I was like, "Yeah, oh, shit." You know, I was like, "Yeah, I play for I play for UT." So, like, so what was she like in she, bed? What, shit, I didn't go that far. And I, just, I sent her along away. I said, "She's like, can I come? I'm gonna root for you. I'm gonna come to your game." And I was just like, "All right, this is my number. Give a false number and well, walk." Have off. you told the story about that uh, the whole house um, the whole house story? Oh man, yeah. We, <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we went we went to go see a friend of mine who's about to get married, and he had a little engagement gathering. And he had this girl that was just starting out as a real bitch. And she heard us joking around about like, hey, Nick, I'm going to take you to the whorehouse, man. She's like, where you some guys say you're going to go? And I was like, we're going to go to a whorehouse. And she's like, really? And where is there a whorehouse here in Austin? I was like, well, you go on 6th Street and you go straight down to the east side. You take a left at this particular corner and there's going to be a woman named Mabel the moment you walk to the door. This is how crazy it is. The moment you walk to the door, she's already got her legs open and waiting for you. And she's looking at us like. You know, I find that really sad that you're gonna do that tonight. And we're like, Are you serious? And I was like, Well, you know, I find it really sad that you're that fucking gullible. And she's like, Oh, I have one beer and a pork chop. And it's like, Oh yeah, you're fucked so, up right one now. Beer so what and fucked a you up? The chop? pork chop or the beer? May I object uh, quickly? That uh, you're making you it. Mean? You, I mean, like you're making it sound like uh, you, you're trying to turning the show into a let's get Nick laid <laughs> kind of week, kind of week here. Like it's like okay, we've got some ideas. Well, let's go here. You Look, know? if you can't get laid at the spill party, you can't get laid anywhere. No, but that's the thing, though. You know, you got uh, these female spill members coming. Like, oh fuck, Nick just wants to go. You know, no, Nick is a very sensitive guy, and, <laughs> and Nick, Nick is a very sensitive virgin. Yeah, um, yes, yes, and he doesn't who, know any better. Please help him. Slept with the lady who desperately, desperately wants to, you know, connect with an American girl and and feel it on an emotional level. You know, not the kind of level that you you just kind of bump and grind, oh, yeah. but the bump and grind to where you cuddle for hours afterwards and expose your deepest, innermost wants and desires. I want to allow myself to be vulnerable. Ladies. You know what he'll say? He'll say, "Please, can I fuck you?" and say, "Thank you." Afterwards, that's how nice a guy he is. What well, but, but, that's, but that's every Brit. I mean, they're, they're, they're very polite people. Thank Tally-ho. you very much. Yes. <laughs> Tally-ho. Yes. Tally-ho. Thank you for a wonderful evening. Uh, good night. <laughs> no, that's what you say afterwards, right? They're so polite. That's why we had to help them in World War II. They're, I am not going to get into because they were just they, they just sat there, you know, just like please, would you stop bombing us? We we really appreciate it if you'd stop the Blitzkrieg. Yeah, because that's yeah. Very- you helped us win the Battle of Britain. Yeah. But no, man. Let me Did just you? say this, and I'm talking. I'm talking well about women here. I'm talking well the about. The movie women. fucking says that we want it by ourselves. Okay. Oh no! Now hold on. Oh, I, I actually, I just saw. Go me in a rant now. I just, saw, I just saw Ip Man today, and Ip Man at the very end of Ip Man, it talks about how because uh, it takes place in 1937 when uh, uh, China is occupied by Japan and they're mm-hmm. fighting Japan, and um, and it talks about how during you know something that Ip Man does. Uh, becomes celebrated and causes the a Chinese revolution that you know they 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 take up arms and they decide to defend themselves against Japan. And in 1945, the Japanese surrendered, uh, and Emperor Hirohito signed the the decree of surrender, and the war was over. And it's just this beautiful moment of. Wait, you forgot the part in there where the United States kicked the crap out of Japan and dropped bombs. Well, it's from you Japan. Kinda, you know that? Yeah, means? no, it's, but it was just kind you of gotta really You got to get their funny. side of the story. Yeah, where their side of the story was, uh, we rose up and then the Japanese finally surrendered seven years later. It's like, that's not how it happened. Well, in their minds. For let fuck's them have sake. It. Let them have it. Uh, hey, we uh, built all your Shermans, motherfucker. Well, let me say this. Oh, if, shit, um, look, it's, no, no, this is, very, this is a very educated uh, conversation here. Let's say Britain is conquered by the Germans, okay? Where would you have launched your uh, European offensive? Spain? No. <laughs> no, I know. No, it's impossible. I mean, like, uh, three major countries won World War II, which is America, the Soviet Union, and Britain. Yes. Without Britain, there would never have been a D-Day. And, <clears throat> Absolutely. And, and let's say that uh, the Soviets would have conquered Europe eventually, and pretty much half the world would be under Soviet rule, and it would just be you guys. I, and I, and I, hope you, I, I hope you don't take it to, to mean that we won the war. That wasn't no, at no, all no, what I was fact, saying. We helped you win the war. No, yeah, and we helped you win the war, and the yes, Soviets helped absolutely. win the war. Absolutely. Many and, countries hey, helped I, out to win World War II. I happen to play the British when I play World War II games. Man, wait, I like the Brits. That's probably because you have no choice when you're playing Nick. Call of Duty. Well, no, 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 <laughs> no, no actually. Oh, no, not video games. I play, I, I play uh, uh, tabletop war games. 
He oh, plays and- he plays a British elf when he's playing DVD. No, no. So- <laughs> So, now, oddly enough, I, no. My uh, the, the World War II army I like playing is I like playing the the uh, the first Polish armored division, which was connected to England. All, all the all the uh, the guys from Poland when they they were exiled from Poland when when uh, uh, the Germans rolled in and finally won, they all fled to England and helped build up the the defenses along Scotland, and then uh, the British trained them and gave them uh, uh, the, their armaments, and they ran as an extension of the the British army. You know what my favorite favorite war movies of all time has got to be uh, A Bridge Too Far because love what Bridge I love about that film is not like oh it's the Americans who won the war or it's the British it's the fact that it has like all the countries that, uh, that contributed to fighting the war whether it be the Polish or the um, the, Eng- the British or the Americans the Canadians the French the Canadi- and fact, Canadians and, and yeah. see, and when you they watch- fucking forgotten the Canadians when, well and when you watch A Bridge Too Far you realize oh that's why we blame Canada <laughs> <laughs> Because because we love Canada and Canada was there at all, but they, they, they I, I love stairs. Canadians. I go no. Now you got me want to watch a bridge too far. I've never you, seen it. You never oh, seen bridge too far. No. Really fantastic. No, it's it's never seen got it one all. of the largest ensemble casts ever made. In fact, <laughs> and when, when you I know find all out, the film, I've just yeah, one of those. I've always like, I should see it. But. Uh, every famous British actor, every famous American actor at that time, except. Uh, Steve McQueen, who bowed out, he was supposed to be in yeah, it. Yeah, that was a shame. And yeah, no, it's it's like man, I wish because it really would have been a collection of all the greatest actors of that, t- like Robert Redford. Um, uh, now I'm going to blank on everybody in the movie. Like literally, the box cover is like twelve faces, like that little the little squares at the bottom of the <laughs> yes. poster. Yeah, except the whole poster is that because it's like <laughs> it's here's everybody in the fucking movie, and that's not even everybody. It's uh, it's really it's a good movie, but it's about uh, Operation Market Garden, which was. Was kind of a clusterfuck. It was a complete failure. That well, I have Netflix now, so I'll put that in my queue. Absolutely, yeah. no. I, yeah, yeah. Um, no, Bridge Too Far is a good World War Two movie. No, I've, it's there's a lot of war movies that I want to see. Like I've never seen Bridge Over the River Kwai. You know. <laughs> yeah, I haven't either. I of need course. to get on that. Uh, but again, that's about the fucking. Brits. You know, another good war movie. Uh, <laughs> if you want to see a really good war movie, a Waterloo. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. Oh God, that's is got- that the one with the. Uh, uh, it's Napoleon. No, yeah, Napoleon. it's not about Austin. Yeah. No, oh. <laughs> no, I thought, no, no, no. See, the Austin's Waterloo original Rick. name no, was Waterloo. He he, and he actually saw like everything around Austin with Waterloo Records. Yeah, yeah, Waterloo yeah. Brewery so, and Waterloo. But go, but Waterloo. The thing that's amazing about it is that uh, if you're sick of like CGI uh, war movies where you have like all these extras, this film had like a hundred was it, like nearly a hundred thousand extras or something like that. And and a great song by ABBA. No, was it wasn't. Waterloo. <laughs> 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 oh up. my god, he walked into that. Yeah, That's no. fucking awesome. I was thinking about that myself, but I left that alone. Okay, okay. I, well, screw Abba. This movie's awesome. Screw Check Abba. It. Yeah, screw fuck Abba. you, Brit. <laughs> the Abba, you, you. Abba fucking put Britain on the map. Uh, fuck Abba. No, yeah. <laughs> I, I, never liked but you're uh, you're, you're a big history Brit, guy, people. man. You, I, I was amazed to hear how much you love history. I know. Yeah, we've all history channel. We've already put half the audience to sleep with our talk of World War II. I know. I, uh, if you, if you notice, I was point. quiet for a little while. I was neat, uh, uh, like resting on my mic stand right here. <laughs> Tell you what, let's go ahead and get into some email. Right yeah, because we're like at an hour 50 now at this point, for fuck's sake. We're a little over, but not too far. Mm-hmm. We'll answer a couple of emails here. Mm-hmm. I got one from uh, Q. And Q says, after seeing the Frank Oz version of Little Shop of Horrors for the hundredth time... I've concluded that it's one of the best examples of a remake out there. Although I know the film was based on a musical based on the Roger Corman film. I think it was actually a film before it was a musical. But anyway, I digress. Yes. Because it takes something and makes it totally different, but even more entertaining than what it would, uh, originally was. My question is, what are some films you would like to see be remade into something totally oh. different for what it originally is? Uh, if this question is too hard for you, I'll let it slide. I read that because, first of all, I didn't look at it before. And second of all, I didn't actually read it. Yeah, I didn't actually read it yet. That's but, why I read it. Uh, you know, everybody You're has that dream project that they want to see remade into something. and I'm I, But I, it remade into something else? Well, I, I, I don't think even I mean, that's... That's well, like, like the original uh, making no, something completely different. I, no, I, I get it, but it's like... 
I don't have anything on, you know, recall. Like, you know what I'd really like? To, I'd like to see Star Wars the musical, but I'd like to see it where uh, Darth Vader isn't the father. No, I don't. I have no idea what what that. I mean, those are the types of things that you get a wild hair up your ass to do something like that, and you go off and you do it and don't tell anybody until it's time to come out, so that everybody goes, "What the fuck is that?" Well, how about Running Man? Did you ever read the book? Yeah, by Stephen King, like by the, Richard Bachman. The Richard Bachman, yeah, and like it, it's completely different from the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I, yeah. As much as I love Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, I wouldn't mind seeing a remake of that, like, but done quite accurate to the book. You know what I mean? Closer, yeah, that's not quite the same, but yeah, that's. I mean, it, if that counts, then yeah. There's, I mean, there's a number of movies like that where I'd like to see. You know, you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see them redo the prequels where the prequels didn't suck to the Star Wars films. That's that's what I would like to see. Um, No, I... I, 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 I know there's some horror movies that I would like to see because they're so ridiculous when they were made back in the 80s, 70s, 60s. Maybe I would like to see them be remade with better effects but done with maybe a comedic touch because they are so ridiculous. What I've talked about in the past, I'll just throw this out. I would like to see Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez make Grindhouse again. Not those stories, but make new Grindhouse stories for a million dollars a piece. I want to see. I want to see a bunch of guys. I mean, because that's they actually that, make a cheap movie. What I'd <laughs> like to see is I'd like to see some of the best directors of today, some of the coolest fucking genre guys, go and make a fucking cool, no budget fucking movie, and make a no but and the best, make the not the kitschiest, but the best no budget movie they can make. I want to see a grindhouse where Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez say, "This is how you make a fucking movie, and this is how you make a fucking movie on no money." To where we all go, "Holy shit, that's awesome!" It's like what. Happened happened with District 9 this weekend, where they took $30 million and made one of the best science fiction films in recent well, years. Well, $30 million is very far from a million. From, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but $30 million is also very far off from what they spent on G.I. Joe. But see, I think Robert Rodriguez does already work within that $30 million range. Well, no, you know? he does. But what I'm saying, you, you, but I'm saying it's like that. It's, you know, see, put someone on a limited budget, but have them try to make the best movie they can. With Robert Rodriguez, I want to see him work with one or two million dollars and make a movie that looks like it was made for one or two million, but kicks ass. It's like that movie I was just talking about, uh, The Siege of, uh, uh, The Siege of Firebase Gloria by Brian Trenchard Smith. It is not a big budget movie, and it kind of shows at points, but it fucking kicks ass. And you can see the, the, the heart and the, just the blood and sweat and tears on the screen trying to make the best goddamn Vietnam War movie they can and making something really cool. I would, and, and you know, at first I was saying, I would argue that, well, what are you going to do without any star power? What's going dis- to, distrib- distribution is going to be like, but it's, it's a fucking million dollars. You know, I can. What, what, what's your quick. answer, though? What would you want to see remade? That's well, that's the, that's a question that I don't have an answer for. I, will admit. I was thinking I of Resident Evil. Yes. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. instead you of the bullshit what? action thing, make it like the video games were. The reason why I didn't think of that because I'm thinking they're talking about a movie that's kind of a cult classic, maybe, and, and it already got, has an audience being remade into but, something well, that's else. That's not the question, though. Here's it's a, any film you want. To be you know remade. what? Resident Evil is a good answer because it would have. It, I would love to see that being remade differently because if you ever played that game. It's the mood of that game that makes it scary. And with the with the film, what they did was they made an action film. And I don't want to see an action film. I want to see a horror movie that made me scared. When it, even at the time, it was primitive, blocky characters, and the mood of the of the game still made it kind of frightening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, that's a good that's a good answer, right there. You, you know what I would let me give you a topical answer. You know what I want to see? As much as I love it, what? I want to see an Inglorious Bastards made where it's just about the bastards. Yes. Where it's about the bastards going through, uh, um, tearing through uh, Europe. Yeah. I don't want to see anything else. I mean, that's no, what no, I... No, no, I, I, and, and I love Inglorious Bastards. I really dig the film, and I like what Quentin did, but I want to see an Inglorious Bastards about the bastards. Yeah, and I like that movie, too. I mean, I, don't, I didn't love it, but I liked the movie a lot, and I, th- that was one of the problems with me major is like, man, I want to see these characters that... I thought I was coming to see. And yeah, I, and you know what? Quentin Tarantino talked about doing uh, another film with him, but he talks about that every movie he makes. You know, I was thinking about doing something else with these characters, man. And it's like, no, nah, you, you're never going to do that. You're spoiling the shit out of I haven't seen that film yet. God damn it. <laughs> no. We haven't spoiled anything. No. no it's just like, you, you already, just, I already know that it's going to be like clips of the Inglourious Bastards. Then it's going to go to the Nazis and but then to another but, lady. Or, but there's nothing spoiling about that. No, nah, I'm just joking. I, mean, I was about, about to say, say, man, I hate, the people have gone spoiler crazy yeah. now. Like, 
like like every little you thing you say up. about a movie, like you now just tell them. There are certain things. I mean, that you you guys do tend to go a little further into spoiler territory than you should. Sometimes, but then there's sometimes people will hear like the synopsis of a, of a movie, like you know, I don't even want to know that much. That's spoiling it for me. It's like, well, fuck, and, man, you know, we well, live in a fucking been, bubble. This has been something we've talked about since the beginning of the site. Where you know, where do you draw that line? Like usually in my written reviews, I almost never give a synopsis unless the film is completely unknown and you just can't find materials on it you know well i mean it gets to a point where look we, we talk about movies like we're sitting around talking about them i think we do go too far sometimes but a lot of times we're just talking about the film if you don't want to hear guys casually talk about a movie and you think you're gonna hear too much this, this is not the what the fuck how many, <laughs> nick is over here like throwing beer on me did i spoil something for you <laughs> No, that, was, it for me, dude, that, that wasn't beer. That was him finishing off uh, the okay. circle jerk cast. <laughs> Looking at me while you're doing this. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm glad you sorry, like sorry. me, Nick, but goddamn. He's British. Uh, He's quick. Uh, uh, man, I just, I mean, if, it, if this is not you, yeah, no. <laughs> That's why Brit girls love us Americans. And that's why you can't get no play here. <laughs> They've heard not it. Not in Texas, obviously. You know? No, everything goes longer in Texas, too. No, not I, just could, I could in LA and Missouri. We're, we're a legal so breastfeeding yeah. state. No, what are you going to do? If, you don't, if this is not your site, if this is not your site. If you come here and like people, like, if you don't want to hear people talk about movies and you think it's going to be spoiled for you, then it's not your site. If you just want to go and hear, or, or come after the movie has come out and you've seen it and then you listen to us, or go to a site where it's just a sentence about a film and you get what you need from there. So, yeah. F- f- One f- more f- question and then we're out. Let me see. Man, we got a lot. Well, Audi 5000. We're going to read two more real quick because we can get through these pretty quick. What is it? Um, let's see here. I have to pee. <laughs> Nick, open your mouth. Uh, oh, oh Jesus out. Christ. What kind of shit let's are you into, Corey, here. for fuck's sake? Has there uh, uh, ever been a song that was in a scene in a movie and you can't listen to that song without immediately permanently picturing the scenes from the movie? Yeah, watch any of Quentin Tarantino's movies. Uh, uh, Reservoir well, yeah, Dogs, yeah, ear cutting scene. You know, what I mean, that's yeah. That's no, all of Tarantino's films have have songs in them that you know. Uh, 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 Stuck in the middle with you is, a, that, is that the one you're the talking one, yeah. about. Uh, of course, uh, um, yeah. There's lots of them. There's there's um, a lot of really good uh, ones. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, but I'm trying I'm trying to think of ones that aren't Tarantino. You'll be a woman. Yeah, Miserlou, um, uh, yeah. Jungle Boogie. I mean, you know, Pulp Fiction alone has a ton of scenes. Yeah, no, but let's let's like let's that. move away from Tarantino because Tarantino. It's just Tarantino fucking takes those songs and owns. Well, oh, I tell you, there's a there's a there's a small movie. Uh, man, you know, oh, you know the what? one that sticks with me now. What's that? Freebird. Uh, Devil's Rejects. Devil's, Devil's Rejects. Rejects. Yeah, See, there we go. Awesome, yeah, where See, you got? Yeah, that is. I one. mean, that he he took that song back and fucking owns that song now. And because every time I see that, I see the I hear that song, I hear the ending to Devil's Rejects, and that's that's that was a, the best part of the whole film. That you know. Just, yes. Just like, well, uh, yeah. No, I mean, it, it was an incredible ending. I don't know if I would call climax. it the best part of that well, song. No, it's, just, it's, it's just a great that, ending. I think. Yeah. That, I remember that the most. But that's the that's a great example of of those kind of songs. Um God, what else? White Rabbit makes me think of Platoon all the time. Oh, see, every time I hear White Rabbit, I I, I see Cable Guy. But that that does happen. I, I get that that the karaoke scene. Uh, the Doors. This is this is the end with in uh, in um, Apocalypse Now. Yeah, I think yeah. of that scene quite a lot. Oh, that you know, it's theme a good from one. Star Wars. I think of the opening crawl to Star Wars. Um, I don't think that the counts. opening <laughs> crawl, like, to crawl? Star Wars? no, the opening crawl to Star oh, Wars. Oh, okay. But okay. there's a uh, there's another scene. Uh, Susie Q makes me think of Apocalypse Now too. There's a, there's there's the the huge scene where. They bring the Playboy bunnies down, and the scene ends up yeah. going crazy, where everybody kind of like breaks down the barrier, and they kind of and they have to the jump helicopter. into the helicopter. Yeah, and they get yeah. the girls out, and they're playing Susie Q. And all I see is Lawrence Fishburne out there. He just, he don't even give a shit about the girls anymore. He's just out there dancing. <laughs> so, Larry Fishburne. Uh, oh, please. No, that was when he was Larry that, Fishburne. You know what? He, he man, it's amazing looking it's at one Apocalypse of the f- Now and looking at him be so young. And even if you he was at, fourteen at the time, yeah, and and even he acts like a fourteen year old punk too. If you listen to like the yeah. the the interviews with some of the cast, he's like, yeah, I love, I want to move out shooting people and shit. And he's like, wow, this is young punk here. And who would have known he grew up to be Larry F- Lawrence, Lawrence. Lawrence Fishburne, Morpheus, Morpheus. motherfucker. All, All right, right, one last question. Let's see. One question from somebody we have not answered a question from before. Joseph. Joseph, is your lucky night. Joseph it says. Better not suck. Yeah, because if it does. Well, you're drawing randomly, and I hate when you do that. 
All right, let's see what All happens. All right, is there a movie based on an... I do that every week, man. That ain't going to end. Right. Is there a movie based on another property, whether it be a graphic novel, book, video game, etc., that has a scene or scenes that had a greater effect on you <laughs> on the scene <laughs> than uh, the, the original source material? For me, it would have been the scene from the extended cut of Watchmen where Night Owl finds... Hollis Mason was murdered. Oh, okay, you okay. know well, this is from the book. Was murdered and loses his shit on that one gang member in the bar. Uh, yeah, I guess there's a. Uh, they cut a lot of things out of books and movies that I guess can have that effect on you. That's a good example. I, can you think of anything? Would you mind uh, explain the question again? But yeah, essentially, it was, it essentially, he, wa- yeah, crazily, he wants to know if there was a scene in a movie that was a, from adapted material where the movie version is better than what was initially in the oh, okay, the book. okay, all right. Um, uh, I, I'll give an example of something. Um, Cujo, actually, it was they they did things in that book that they. Probably, maybe if they remade it, they could do in a movie, but it would be really hard to do because in the book Cujo, to give the feeling of what it feels like to have rabies the, 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 for a dog, the dog, you hear what the dog is thinking, and the dog is thinking about bees buzzing around his head, and, he, and, and that's the only way he can relate to it, the illness that he has because it's, it's making his head go crazy, and that's what's driving him to kill. So I'm thinking, like, that's kind of cool um, that you can do that in a book. I think I'm thinking, well, not of a scene, but no, like, it, but a whole but film, uh, Fight f- Club. I, was that? Sorry. But he wants to know when it was done better in a film than in the book. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's why I was not when the not, not when the original source material is better. When the film is better. But he mentioned a scene in right here. Yeah, what he's talking good. about is he's talking about the scene in Watchmen that was adapted from the book that he feels in the extended cut was done better than. Oh, was, was that done. in the extended cut? Okay, yeah. I did not see the extended cut. Yeah. All right. It's All right. it's. Well, I was going to say um, maybe not the scene, but like the whole film. I, I think the f- film Fight Club is way better than the book. Have you ever read the book? Yeah. Yeah. What do, what do you honestly think? Because I think well, the, the book is, is the, the book uh, halfway through the book completely veers off in a different direction than the movie did, and the movie captured what the book was going on about better than the book did. Yeah, that's, that's uh, my feeling that the film was better than the book. Okay, well, if they oh, you're talking about the, was the movie better than the source material? No, 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 no. It's like, yes, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's talking. His question is about movies that are better than the source. Oh material. yeah, I, but he's talking yeah. about a specific scene. So my thing was like, I can't think of a scene, but I'm thinking about a book, a uh, film that's better than the book, and that's Fight Club. So maybe you could think of something better, you know, that you could use. Oh well, okay. If I was gonna go for something, to come. That, that, I can only use one example right now, and it's not exactly what you're talking about. But the, one of the major examples of uh, a, a movie being so much better than the book is Forrest Gump, if you ever read Forrest Gump. That is absolutely right, yeah. I mean, that book is crap. That book is terrible. And it was almost like they, 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 they saw a good idea in it, and they rewrote it and made it a good movie. You know, I, and they wrote a sequel that was equally as bad. How did they pitch that book? To like to the studios because it's really terrible, and for them to go on with making you know Forrest Gump the film Carl and for it to be, he can hold it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, God damn like, this crazy I, bread! I can't take it. So well, he's been like two through two bottles already. Mm-hmm. And he's on his third. Shit. Yeah. Uh, uh, did he pee in that bottle right there before he left? There was a book called Madame Doubtfire, uh-huh. which is fucking awful like i had to read that for class when i was little and it was just terrible 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 so i don't know maybe robin williams read it once when he was drunk and he just thought it was a good idea for a movie or something damn i don't know that was actually a book yeah it's a Ma- terrible terrible book you know jesus christ i don't Mrs. think it was Doubtfire br- wasn't even yeah. that great of a movie <laughs> i don't want to read a hey, novelization hey, that was of my shit. childhood mate yeah, i you, love mrs Doubtfire. yeah you were a child yeah, exactly. You, you were a little. Well, it's better than that, that shorts thing, you know. Mrs. Doubtfire, oh. everyone can love, you know. Everyone. Can. All right, he's back now. We can go ahead and yeah. wrap did, this did thing. Do you up. like Mrs. Doubtfire? Uh, when it came out, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. Seen yeah it he's in a saying it's shit. I I really enjoyed it when it came out. That's a really funny fucking movie. It was run by fruiting. <laughs> How could you stand there and say that it's not a good film? I I'm love a, Mrs. Doubtfire. I'm a snob. I don't know. I I wasn't crazy about it. It, it was during my period of like being really annoyed by Robin Williams in goofy movies. Like God, I love Robin Williams. I, I, I mean, I do. I, I hate a lot of the choices he's made uh, over his career, but God, I love his stand up. I I fortunately got to see him at one of his last stand up uh, bits before he had his heart attack this yeah. year. So I got to see his tour, which is really great. No, I like Robin Williams. I think he's a funny guy, but he's made some annoying movies. And even he yeah. had to. Oh go God, off and like admit- RV. RV is terrible. RV, I remember that. RV is awful. It's probably RV, so bad. Even it, it, Britain didn't get it. 
And man, do you and guys you get see our it? shitty movies? Yeah. And you love them. It and fucking sucks. You're, you, yeah. you're the reason there was another Garfield movie. Fuck you, Britain. Uh, well, we get some movies ahead of you guys. We've got Star Trek, I think. Uh, yeah, you should have done Star Trek and Transformers too, but that was pretty shit. Take that shit. And, no, uh, fucking, taken. We got and, Taken way before you. Yeah, guys and did. what the hell was up with you guys getting uh, the new Bond movie before us? I mean, for fuck's Come on, sake! Man. I was in the premiere for that. It's Bond. It's, yeah. Bond, is, Bond is as American as apple pie. Bond is British. So I'll let yeah. you have that. Thank oh you. come Thank on! You. Was, yeah, it's, you know. it was a good premiere. Though. I'll give you your Bond in His Majesty's Secret Service. There you go. Do oh, you know man. Brits who actually get laid? Are you fucking kidding me? I guess that's why he's the British superhero is he actually can get laid and get shit done and the Americans turn to him instead of the other way around. Yeah, he's, uh, his British I've accent I've had some great stories about getting laid in America. In Missouri. So in Missouri and <laughs> with, in with Los fuck Angeles. Yeah, and they, and Missouri, they fuck cows just, and shit, man. Come on, you know. Girls. And Los Angeles, who can't get laid in Los Angeles? Yeah. Cyrus gets laid in Los Angeles for fuck's yeah, sake. In Missouri, they fuck their cousins, man. Shit, they were just, they were happy you Actually, were that was the stereotype of Texas, I believe, that you guys fuck your cousins. Well, no, no, well, no, no I think no, that's proven wrong. That's, <laughs> no, that's not true. True, but it's well, East and West outside Texas. of Austin. Yeah. Was Focal never lose toe, but then again, some Focal. I would say fuck you, but that's, <laughs> if you go to West or East Texas, that's very much true. East Texas, especially. Like Cletus, Holy Black shit. John, Yokel. Yeah, yeah. Hey, wow, not, did you listen to that American I'm, accent on him? He's almost got it down. I know he's like Slack George Yoko. No, that's the thing. I, the thing I love about Brits is they have a really thick accent until they start singing, and then they sound American. Both of you are starting to bore me now. Good night, everybody. All right, see. Uh, night, night.